The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I am Pastor Marty Ringer, and welcome to another great Sunday service here at St. Mark Lutheran Church. Now, today is the last Sunday of Advent, and today we're celebrating love. Now, normally we talk about the love of the Son and the Father, but today we're going to talk about the love of the Son and the Stepfather, Joseph, and how he plays a significant role in the life of Jesus. So I pray that this service and sermon is a blessing to you.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord God, we confess that sometimes we do drift far from you. Lord God, we confess that we forget the real reason for this season. It's your Son coming into the world, into our lives to save us from our sins. Lord God, forgive us and hear us as we confess, saying together. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority alone, I declare all of your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the fourth and final Sunday in Advent, we prepare to celebrate the birth of the one born to save us from sin and death. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, the first of his name, the child of promise and the Prince of Peace. He is coming into the world and he will come again. Now hear the gospel of our Lord as it is written in Matthew, the first chapter starting at the 18th verse down to the 25th. And we say glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord, and we say, praise to you, O Christ. is for when we have found out what life's really worth there'll be peace on earth someday all our dreams will all come true someday in a world where men are free maybe not in time for you Time. Someday at Christmas we will see a land with no hungry children, no empty hands. One happy morning where people share our world where people care. Someday at Christmas. No men 
We thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for this season, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for life. Lord God, we thank you for, for grace. Lord God, right now I ask you to empower me with the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to speak to your people, Lord God, but not my words, Lord God, yours. To encourage them during this season, Lord God, the season of expectations, expectation of the, the Messiah. Lord God, we thank you in advance for all of your blessings in your holy name. Amen. So as usual, I like to say happy Sunday or happy day. This is the day that the Lord has made and uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, today, <coughs> excuse me, today I would, I would actually say this gospel reading for me today, this would probably be better for a Father's Day uh, 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 gospel or Father's Day um, message because today we're talking about Joseph. You know, and, and if I had a, you know, I don't have a real creative theo theological title for this sermon today, but if I was to have one, it would probably just be just something like, oh, really? You know, at the end of the day, just, uh, oh, really? And I'll explain. You know, because if you, if you put ourselves in Joseph's shoes and just thinking about the context that they were in. So I can see Joseph's parents saying, son, we don't found you a wife. We don't found you a beautiful lady that you're going to marry and I can see Joseph being a young man of just saying, oh, really? A little bit happy about it. You know, because when during those times when they would put two together, it was like a binding contract. Both families would, you know, one family would pay another family for the daughter and, and, and it was a contract. So they're actually in this context, they're married. And I can see that first real, real heart-to-heart -heart conversation that Mary had with Joseph. They're saying, I gotta tell you something. <laughs> I'm with child. And I can imagine Joseph saying, really? Really? By who? And she responds with, well, you know, the Holy Spirit came and touched me. It was the Holy Spirit. It wasn't another man or anything like that. It was the Holy Spirit. And I can, I can really see Joseph saying, oh, <laughs> oh, really, huh? Oh, 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 really? The Holy Spirit came. And out of all the people in the world, he came and touched you. You was touched by an angel, huh? Really? Oh, really? I can see that. I can see him thinking about all the options that he might want to do and could do or what was going to be popular. And then he gets a, a visit from an angel in a dream that said the child that your wife has is the Holy One. And you are to name him Jesus. And I bet there was probably a little bit more conversation or some thoughts because I can imagine Joseph saying really God oh really but you know at the same time at the same time I can also see Joseph at that moment being overjoyed too he, there's some things about Joseph we got to put into the context and understand a little bit more about Joseph because that's why I say this might be a really a Father's Day sermon more so because looking at Joseph and his history of who he was, he probably was a pretty good father out of the house of David. From Bethlehem. The scripture says he was from Bethlehem and also when he had to go back to for the census, he had to go back home 
to Bethlehem. And it's interesting now, now this is just going to be a side little, this is a small fun fact type thing because sometimes we mix truth with traditions and sometimes things get kind of mixed up, you know, because, you know, he, he had to go back to his hometown, to Bethlehem. And it's interesting because, think of this, think of this, during this time, Bethlehem only had about 500 people, five to a thousand, somewhere in there in Bethlehem, but everybody in Bethlehem knew that the Messiah is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. This wasn't a, a secret. So growing up in my city and I'm knowing about the Messiah, I'm from the house of David, so I am in that lineage, so I, I am one that's a believer. Now, think of this, when he goes back for the census, the place that he was born, where his family is at. I, we got to imagine that he still had family there. Because I don't think everybody, all of his brothers, sisters, cousins, everybody left. I couldn't imagine that. Now, I know, granted, he did. But when he came back, and it's interesting because, you know, the original, original scripture writing, they said Joseph and Mary couldn't find room at the Cataluma. The Cataluma. The Cataluma actually means guest room. Now in the King James we see the inn. Actually in the NIV, the New Translated, it does say the guest room, but this is the guest room. And now keep in mind in these, during this time, the houses were a little bit different, but you did have the guest room for people that come and want to spend a little time with you. Then you had the family area or the common area. And then on the bottom level is where they kept the animals, you know, for protection and for the animals to keep them together. And you, this was their life. So you have Joseph and Mary coming home to Bethlehem and it was no guest rooms available. And he said, well, no, the scripture says they went to end, to end, to end, and there was no rooms. And it's like, well, if, if the scripture said that, find it, because it's not in the Bible. It doesn't say they went to end, to end, and it was no room. For, and then the other aspect of this is Mary is about to give birth. It's about to be a little bloody. Bloody is unclean. And if all of our relatives are all in this one house, then we don't want to contaminate it. So we, we just going to put you down here. Just, just one of those side thoughts, you know, of, of understanding that sometimes the truth and tradition kind of gets mixed, mixed up. So I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. But now thinking about, thinking about Joseph, a man that I would say, had few words, but it was just because he didn't have any words in the Bible. There's no writing of his words. It's just his thought of what to do with this lady, my wife. Yes, they're engaged, but see, during that time, the engagement is different than this time. Because see, this time, in our current time, if we engaged, we're about to get married. So now if you got pregnant when we're about to get married, no, no, we ain't going to do that. But see, with them, they've already made this contract. So actually, they are already married. And Joseph has some options. I can, I can make this a public situation and let everybody know she don't done something wrong with somebody. She says the Holy Spirit, but she don't done something with somebody. And what they would do is take the two individuals out to the edge of the city and stone them. Don't him. He's like, nah, you know what? I'm going to do this. I do care about this woman. And I will, I will be the bad guy. Think about it. He said, I would divorce her silently in a sense. Take her off and do it silently. 
We ain't gonna make a big fuss about it. I just let her go. Even though knowing that she has child and most people are gonna assume that it's mine because we were married. And they're gonna say, you're gonna marry this lady, get her pregnant and then leave and I pay child support. Oh, really? Oh, really? Now she, <laughs> she probably won't get married again. She has been shamed in the community. But they're looking at you like, what kind of man are you? To go back on your word, go back on your contract. Oh, really, Joseph? But Joseph said, after the dream, Lord God, I will. I'll, I'll adopt this child. But he fully, fully adopted. Because, again, during this time, just like Zechariah, they're waiting for the father to give the name. They're waiting for the father to name the child. That's, that becomes really a part of the family. I give you the name and hold you up and you are a part of this family. Joseph was obedient. He named this newborn child Jesus the Savior. Because he believed also after a while. Well, I believe he believed. And you got to imagine. You got to imagine all the time that Joseph spent with Jesus. Okay, Joseph was a carpenter. His son Jesus is a carpenter too. So that was an apprentice. That means they had to spend so much time together. Mentoring. Talking about scriptures. Raising this Messiah up to be a man, to hold his, help, hold his head up and to walk with confidence and at the same time being humble. Yes, you are the son of man, but you're going to take this trash out tonight. You know, just being a real father. He had compassion for him. This was not just his stepson, this was his son. There's a lot of men right now that are raising sons and daughters that aren't theirs, but that commitment is still there. Just because they don't share the same DNA doesn't mean that we ain't family. Not, that doesn't mean that Joseph looked at him like this is just my stepson or what was that song out some years ago that's just my uh stepdaddy or you just my stepdaddy or something like that but i don't think jesus ever saw him as my stepfather or my pretend father or just you that dude in the house you know joseph even though he didn't say a lot of words he had a big impact now, how does that talk to us? How does that talk to us? Are you willing to fully, fully adopt Jesus yourself? Are you fully committed to dealing with those oh really moments when God brings new situations into your life? for his story. See, understand the story really isn't about Joseph. He played a part in it, but it's really God's story. God uses me, God uses you to fulfill his story. And a lot of times it's that, really Jesus? We gotta deal with this today? Really Jesus? I, I'm losing my job? Oh, really, Jesus, they got sick and now I got to take care of them. I didn't plan for this. I'm saying, think about it. Think about it. Joseph didn't plan to have this kind of marriage, especially starting out. I, 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 I planned on starting fresh, just me and you. Maybe we kind of, you know, live a life for a couple of years and then start having kids. Wait, this wasn't a part of my, my plan. 
And we all know that when we make plans, God starts giggling. <laughs> Want to know how that works out for you. You know, because that's your plan, but that might not be my plan that I even have for you. So, what does that say to us? Are you willing to accept those old really moments when God is throwing you that curveball? Or God is asking you to do something that is unusual. That other people might say that you're crazy at doing. Because I can imagine if, if Joseph was talking to his brothers or his friends and said, you know, this, 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 this girl pregnant. And you still going to stay with her? You crazy. Yeah, I can imagine that. I can imagine him feeling that the same way. Just like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with this. I'm going to look like a fool. I'm supposed to believe her? I'm going to look like a fool. You know, it's funny. Sometimes when we do things for Christ, we look like a fool sometimes. Sometimes we feel like it. And we say, why am I doing this? I need to privately quit this position. You know, I don't need to do a public quit. I, I, can, can we just talk in the back room? I didn't, God, I didn't want to do all of this. I feel kind of like foolish. But see, God already knew the end plan. God already knew that I'm choosing two people that I am going to empower. I am going to protect. I am going to guide. I am going to nurture. I am going to be their God. Even though Joseph, even though he might have felt crazy about it, but when he committed himself to being a true father to Jesus. Keep in mind, everything after that God dictated, they protected. Go to Egypt for the protection. Now it's time for you to come from Egypt for the protection. I want to make sure that the Magi can, can come and see the newborn, and I will dictate that. I will make sure that the world knows that he is born. See, when God puts you in those situations, he's going to protect you also. He's going to protect your finances. He's going to protect your home. He's going to protect your well-being. So if you are knocking on a door and they ain't got no room for you, he will make space for you. That's the father that we serve. See, I'm asking the question, are you willing to adopt Jesus? Because Jesus has adopted us. God made us. God claims us. But call me a son of the God, of our God. Because that's, I think, that's that main name that we need to show off the most. I'm a disciple. I'm a son of the Most High. The one that is the perfect Father. The one that gives us that perfect peace and give us that perfect grace. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for being that perfect Father, Lord God. Lord God, thank you for guiding us through this life, Lord, as a perfect father would, Lord God. Lord God, I, I thank you for all of your love, all of your grace, all of your mercy. In your holy name, amen. Cool, cool, cool.
as we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence among us. Let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope, new peace, new joy, and new love. Let us pray. Lord God, stir up in your people great anticipation for every good thing that you are about to do. Teach us to recognize your son dwelling among us. Bless your church in these weeks so that all people may know Emmanuel through forgiveness in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. Bring joy to the lowly and humility to the proud. Let your face shine on all people that they may direct and lead others into paths of righteousness, unity and peace of your reign. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, lead us to be peacemakers in this world. We pray for an end to violence committed on ourselves. Lead us in peaceful ways and means to love and care for one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. We remember those who cannot be present. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. Heal the sick and speed their recovery. We pray for all in need those on our prayer list, and those we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we have brought our concerns to you in prayer for those in our family, our congregation, our community, and our world, we ask these things all in the name of the one you sent to heal and free us, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Even though this is the last Sunday of Advent, today is all about love but spread the love throughout the entire year. Go in peace and serve the Lord.